Okey boleh nampak saya punya skrin eh? Boleh Madam. Okay so kita akan continue with contractors remedy. So before kita dah tengok okay on contractors punya liability uh, in designing. So kalau kita recap balik on uh, slide 30 before okay you could see that kalau kita kata is there any design liability uh, untuk uh, contractor. So basically for traditional contract there is no design liability for the contractor. Okay, why? Because in traditional contract, all the designers yang prepare all the drawing, so it is the designer's responsibility on the design. So anything regarding uh, design or li liability regarding the design, so basically got nothing to do with the contractor. So kalau you tengok the second column, okay, if nominated subcontractors design, Okay, so basically the main contractor tak akan uh, liable for design of nominated subcontractor. So nominated subcontractor or NSC will be responsible on, okay, his design. Okay, design liability will be put on NSC itself. If the main contractor design some parts of the work, so basically the contractor will be held liable on his design or if he propose a new design so maksudnya dia ada um, okay some uh, portion okay in designing so on his part yang dia design tu he will held liable kalau dia propose totally new design okay far uh, ataupun apart from the architect's design okay like this this uh, statement <coughs> so basically, okay, dia mestilah liable with dia punya design. So kalau traditional contract, okay, basically there's no design liability except for, okay, kalau dia design some portion of the work or he proposed new design or he uh, instructed his nominated subcontractor to design on certain or some portion of the uh, uh, building okay so basically a nominated sum contractor will be held liable if okay kalau design and build contract you could see okay ada uh, mark dekat sini dia letak dekat sini semuanya right so maksudnya in designed and built contract okay kita you punya main contractor, kalau you work as a main contractor, you are going to be fully liable on your design. Okay, the difference between uh, design and build contract as well as traditional contract is that dalam design and build contract, okay, the contractor will be appointed to design as well. So if you could see, okay, dekat kita punya uh, relationship matrix uh, dekat uh, employer here. Okay, ada employer with main contractor. Tapi kalau dekat uh, design and build, okay, dia punya dia punya sorry the design matrix will look like this. Okay, so all the consultant will be under the contractor. So I akan bawa all this dekat sini. Okay. All the architects, engineer. Okay. Will be here. Okay. And then all the consultant will be under the contractor. Okay. If you could see. So dah tak ada re uh, relationship between employer and consultant. Okay. Okay, so engineer, okay, QS, architect, everyone, sorry, everyone akan berada di bawah kontraktor. In this case, kalau you tengok, okay, siapa yang akan design? 
Siapa yang akan design? Masih. Siapa yang akan buat design? Okay, arkitek. Now arkitek semua dekat mana? Yes. So, kalau arkitek or engineer dekat design and build. Okay. So, I buang kat sini. Okay, I nak tunjuk dekat you the difference eh. Okay. Okay, alright. So kalau you tengok dekat sini, selain daripada Okay. Kalau dekat sini, you look at this, employer will be in contract with contractor and bawah employer will be architect, engineer, quantity surveyors all under employer side. So all these people consultant will work under direct relationship with the employer. They are appointed by the employer. And kalau you tengok dekat the other side kat sini, Okay, there is contractor and all those subcontractor, nominated or domestic, supplier ke whatever, semuanya work under contractor. Kalau you look at this kat sini design build. Okay, contract. Okay. There is employer, employer akan ada main contract dengan contractor. Semua consultant as well as semua subcontractor adalah under main contractor. Now I ask you tadi, siapa yang buat design? Adakah main contractor? Adakah main contractor? Tak. Betul. Bukan main contractor buat design eh. Tak buat design. Okay. So siapa yang buat design? Architect. Yes. Masih arkitek, masih engineer. However, however, if you look at the contractual, contractual matrix, the architect as well as the engineer now, where are they? Are they still under employer? Direct relationship with the employer or are they now under contra main contractor and they are working under contract main contractor's uh, sub, uh, apa ni? instruction? Okay, so kalau you tengok dekat I punya uh, metric ni sekarang, okay, semuanya sekarang ni di bawah main contractor, memang arkitek dengan engineer buat design tetapi di bawah instruction main contractor. Bukan lagi di bawah instruction employer yang macam tradisional. Okay. So bila dia di bawah main contractor, so basically whatever happens, okay, kepada the design, okay, who will help liable? Contractor. Yes. So in this case, if anything happen dekat design, so all these people, okay, yang ada problem, so basically employer akan ada impact on. So kalau arkitek yang uh, salah, so basically employer akan sue uh, arkitek. Okay. Contractor tak boleh terus direct dengan arkitek sebab dia tak ada direct relationship. Kalau design and build contract, if anything happen to the design, employer akan sue contractor, contractor yang akan ada okay, contract with dia punya own consultant dekat bawah dia ni. So contractor yang akan sue arkitek dia. Tapi main contract masih under employer dan juga contractor. It's just that kalau sini all the consultants will be under the employer. If you look at here, all the consultants now move under responsi responsibility of the contractor. 
Okay. So kalau you tengok dekat sini. Okay. So if anything happen. Okay. To any of. Okay. Those people working under the main contractor. So kalau you tengok dekat sini. Okay. Main contractor. Okay. So kalau you tengok dekat sini main contractor. Okay. Anything happens, okay, subcontractor dia buat hal, nominated subcontractor dia buat hal, architect buat hal, engineer pun ada fault. So basically, main contractor will be held liable. Okay, why? Because kalau you tengok this kind of matrix, okay, dia main contractor ini dipanggil ataupun term dia adalah S. Uh, single point responsibility. Okay. In this case, okay, kalau you tengok in this case, if anything happen dekat design, so all the consultant akan be responsible. In this case, if anything happen to the design, the main contractor will be held uh, res responsible because all the consultants are now under the main contractor instruction or supervision. Okay, nampak tak ada difference? So, kalau you are, okay, uh, nak explain on contractual relationship or design responsibility uh, in a traditional contract as well as Okay, design liability under design and build contract. Okay, I nak someone. Um, okay, jap eh, I punya ni. Okay, let me check your. I nak someone uh, explain dekat I. Uh, Sabrina? Okay, so what? It, what can you summarize? Okay, responsibility, design responsibility in traditional uh, per, uh, procurement arrangement, okay, versus design and build contract. Bagi satu je. Uh, um, difference, differences ke similar? similar? As differences. Differences. Uh, if the contract relationship design build contract, uh, the employee only can um, to the main contractor. Uh, different with the contract relationship traditional, uh, main contractor, the uh, employer can sue the, the consultant and main contractor too. Uh, okay, Sabrina, name one, one person to explain. Next. Uh, uh, boy, a boy. A boy. Yeah. Uh, Darwish lah. Ah, Darwish. Ah, uh, you know. Okay. Uh, summarize. What have you learned? The difference. <coughs> okay. Nia, yeah, ada yang terminum air ni kerja lagi ni. <coughs> Tekak air sakit dah. Okay, Darwish, summarize. Uh, what do you understand? Design and build contract, okay, design liability versus traditional contract. Uh, tak faham, I do. Darwish, apa yang tak faham? Apa difference design liability antara traditional Hello. contract dan juga design and build contract, Darwish? Sebagai satu then, je, in one in one uh, sentence, sentence je. Kalau design and build contract. Uh, in English, Darwish. Uh, I don't know. Uh, if design <laughs> and build contract, uh, if I can sue the main, con main contractor. Other and... than that, tu Sabrina dah uh, cerita then. dah. Tak nak cerita pasal okay. susu dah. Ha. Uh, Ha. Cerita pasal dia punya uh, relationship matrix 
contractual matrix ataupun uh, relationship matrix tu? What do you see? Who's working under who? To start uh, with? Uh, architect works under main contractor. Yelah, tu uh. Uh, design build ke traditional? Uh, design build. Darwish, you cakap saya <laughs> tak nak tanya, you cakap in design uh, build contract, uh, cakap macam tu. Apa? Uh, uh, in design and build contract, okay. uh, the architect work under main contractor. Okay, who else working under the main contractor? Ah, uh, engineer. Who else? Who else? Ha, who else? So banyak tu ha, dekat dekat uh, screen tu. Quantity, <laughs> quantity surveyor and supplier. Okay, all those quantity surveyor, architect as well as the engineer, we call it. What do we call them? Ah, uh, consultant. Ha, ya. Yeah. So, uh, okay, Darwish, name one girl. Uh, one girl. Hmm. Uh, Nah, jangan PM tepi Darwish eh. Jangan <laughs> jangan panggil aku. Afrina, Afrina. Ha, nanti ada yang PM tepi Darwish kau jangan panggil aku. <laughs> Siapa? Uh, Afrina, madam. Afrina, are you there? Yes, madam. Yes. Okay, sambung daripada Darwish. Um, But could you see on the screen? Uh, just tell me. What do you understand? Uh, main con tu... If mankind is uh, have a single point responsibility. Okay. Responsible, single point responsibility means? Means dia, uh, he liable on all the consultant and sub and supplier. Yes. Finally, Afrina. <laughs> right? Okay, name one boy to explain uh, on traditional uh, contract. Design liability. Um, Adam. Eh, alah. Tak payahlah Adam. Rafa lah. Adam asyik jawab je. Kita bagi orang lain. Siapa? Rafa. Uh, Adam kalau saya tak tanya pun dia jawab. So kita exclude kan dia uh, for the time being. Rafa, where are you? Yes, madam. Yes. Ha. Uh, so basically uh, the traditional Mm. Uh, the designer is uh, under the employer. Okay. And uh, under the main contractor will be the subcon uh, okay. supplier. Okay. And then? And then. Okay. Next explanation. Name one girl. Um, <coughs> name one girl. Rauza. Okay, Rauza, where you at? Yes, madam. Ah, yes. Okay. Uh, Rafa mentioned on uh, traditional contract. So, all the consultants or designers will be under the um, employer mm -hmm. where those uh, subcontractors, domestic as well as nominated subcontractor, And uh, other suppliers will be under the main uh, contractor. Okay, what what else? Um, employer, um, the architect, engineer and also quantity surveyor only can accept order from employer. Okay, name one boy. So explain um, next. Uh, Idris. Okay, Idris. Okay, so in a traditional contract, okay, employer will instruct the um, a consultant and those consultant, okay, they are going to okay, accept, uh, Rauza kata, accept okay, or receive orders or instruction from the employer because they have direct relationship with the employer. So, they are working on behalf of the employer. Okay, next. Idris? Yes. Yes. Uh, apa lagi boleh? Ha, banyak lagi boleh cerita. Ha, in term of design liability, ha, relate kan? 
what what do the contractor okay will do about the design in traditional contract is he going to design anything or is he just following the drawings and plan uh, plans supplied by the consultants of the employer uh, yes in okay, yes. contractor uh, huh. just follow the so the main contractor basically Follow the drawing. We'll just following the drawing, just uh, uh, by the consultant. Uh, consultant. Okay. So, ada tak dia akan involve in design? No. Okay. So basically, we know that they are not going to involve with any design. They will just follow all those drawings or plans supplied by the consultant yes okay next name one girl um tak oh, no. name one girl je bukan suruh pilih girlfriend suruh jawab soalan okay. ha uh... Eh, cepat sikit. Ana, 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 Ana. Siapa? Ana, Ana. Ana? Uh, Adriana. Oh, Adriana. Okay, yeah, tadi yeah. Afrina. Okay, I ingat uh, dia orang panggil orang yang sama. Okay, no. Yes. What It's else you could say about uh, design liability of uh, the main contractor in uh, traditional contract? Madam, would it be okay if I say that for traditional contract the uh the client would how could i say this the client do not could, do not involve a lot in the design and like design and build oh so you're talking about design and build contract now no i'm talking about you're asking about traditional contract right yeah eh oh Oh, sorry, sorry. Ah, okay. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Just explain uh, what do you feel like uh, explaining, yes. If, so if, for if traditional you need to talk about design and build contract, yeah, please proceed. Okay, for design and build contract, since the consultant is, and uh, since the consultants are under the main contractor, mm -hmm. then I guess the client would not be, requires a lot. I mean, it requires less on expertise and resources. Is it understandable? Uh, since the consultants aren't under not entirely yes so you're you're trying to say that uh the employer is less responsibility no no i mean it's i mean it requires less honor expertise and resources since all of them is under main con okay by uh, under employer Okay, but you have to remember that under employer, there will be uh, those people will that uh, will advise the employer on those things. Okay, it's just that they, they don't appear in the, in, in the contract. Oh. Okay, uh, design and contract is actually introduced, okay, uh, for the employer. It's like more to the employer side. Mm -hmm. Okay, the weightage for uh, especially for the risk. Okay, because the employer uh, wish not to take so much risk. Okay, in a contract, hence they will transfer all the risk to the main contractor. So that's why the word single point responsibility is used here. So if you could see single point responsibility means okay single point whatever happens under you you are going to be responsible it's you 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 and you over again no one else oh, so okay? yes so i can i can say lah it's diminish the liability okay hence all the designs hence right? all the hmm? hence all the designs liability will be transferred to main contractor yes instead of kalau you tengok uh, traditional instead of the consultants 
Okay, work under the employer. Name one boy to summarize, final summary before I move to the next slide. Uh, Alif. Okay, Alif. Adriana ni ke? Girlfriend si siapa nama tu? Azri? Macam familiar? No, I don't know any Azri. Okay. Okay, dia orang mention uh, apa that girl name tapi I tak ingat. Okay. Okay, uh, Alif. Where you at? Uh, yes. Yes. So, to summarize. Um. I nak dengar apa I nak dengar eh. Kalau tak, I tak move to the next slide. Yes. I just want to hear what I want to hear. Get it right, Alif. Hmm. Okay. So, design responsibility. Design responsibility. For traditional contract will for be For traditional contract will be Ha, uh, will be apa? Uh, ni I yang jawab ni bukan you <laughs> Gelap pula dia, ha cepat Semua kena uh, ni ya, cheer, cheer Alif Sebab kalau dia salah jawab, I tak, tak, I tak akan move kepada next slide uh, Will be main contractor Will be apa? Main Design liability Design of, liability Ha a traditional contract traditional contract traditional contract ha huh. um is is not um not ha huh. under under employer ha huh? uh. this is a traditional contract Traditional ke design build? Orang tengah cerita pasal ni ha tengok dekat chat box ni yang tengah type apa ni ha Ah, semua pergi kat check box.
Okey. Bagi tahu I yang mana betul yang mana salah. Adam. After this, uh, I nak Wan Akilah. Lepas tu I nak Hilwina. Why number two is true, Adam? Okay, responsibility. Okay. 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 Number four. Okay. And then number five. Ha, only? Ha, only. Kalau uh, main contractor to propose new design instead of using the original design by the architects or engineer. So basically, he will be held liable. Okay. Number six. Number six, Adam. And the employer? Employer design ke? Ha, so, kena te tengok balik eh, this one. Sorry. This one, this box. Ha. So kalau NSC yang design, so ada ada tag ni tak? You nampak tak ada tick tak dekat sini? Ha, okay. So tak. Okay, uh, thank you Adam uh, Wan Akilah. Adam. Yes. Adam has answered every question so. <laughs> Yelah tak apalah ulang-ulang balik. I oh. nak a different explanation yes. Number one. Okay uh, true. Okay. Why is it true? I nak explanation sekali eh. Kalau it's true then why? 
Presentability of a traditional is not only the main contract liability because um, the design is under consultant. Design is under the consultant's responsibility. Okay. And then the second one. Um, the main con are true. Okay. Because um, mm. because it takes uh, the full responsibility for both the design and construction of the project because it's under single point responsibility. Yeah, so single point responsibility means you will take responsible for both. everything and everyone under him. Yes. So if the consultant is appointed by him, so basically he will be held liable for his consultant appointed by him. Okay. Okay. Ha. So basically, basically kalau uh, professional practice ni, uh, I have to warn you lah. Uh, professional practice ni, um, it is not like contract, it's not like um, economy, it's not like uh, project management. Uh, dia, uh, uh, the narrative or the writing that you need to do, dia mestilah uh, more towards professional punya advice, kan? So, kalau uh, you are not able to write uh, a proper uh, sentences, you are not able to, uh, you know, narrate whatever uh, you wanted to narrate. So basically, tak sampai lah nanti. So, I'm a yang paling, uh, yang paling orang kata uh, pasal PP ni, yang paling agak uh, kurang enak pasal PP ni, dia macam, dia, you faham kot? So, now pun you rasa macam it's hard to digest and then it's hard to uh, apa ni nak throw out balik dekat on paper betul tak? You rasa macam you faham tapi you just don't know how to put those uh, on paper as well as how to write uh, a good uh, sentences, how to explain it better uh, sampai benda tu benda tu apa ni uh, under, understandable uh, to whoever that read your uh, essay tu. Okay so um I have to warn you that uh, kita akan buat banyak uh, uh, tutorial. Okay, if you don't like me uh, just because of I bagi you banyak tutorial untuk PP ni, I don't mind uh, sebab in the end uh, you'll thank me. Sebab kalau you tak buat uh, tutorial banyak, you don't practice more, you don't practice writing, I'm afraid you couldn't answer uh, exam nanti. Uh, so macam nanti benda tu tak sampai. Uh, actually I know you know tapi bila you write tu benda tu macam eh uh, eh maksud dia lain uh, kan. Uh, so it's not good lah. Alright. So nanti I akan bagi you uh, tutorial. Okay as much as you could kena siapkanlah tutorial tu eh. So I akan choose whatever yang I nak uh, bagi dekat you untuk submit. So yang mana tak submit tu still kena buat untuk your punya future reference. Right. Okay, so uh, tak ada masalah. Kita continue dengan kita punya lecture hari ni. So Akilah. Akilah. Yes, yes madam. Uh, okay, so habiskan sampai uh, enam ni. Enam. Okay. So okay. the Actually, I punya, I punya uh, what we call it statements ni. Actually memang kalau you tengok Dia memang untuk membantu you jawab sebenarnya sebab bila you cerita pasal for example eh Okay pasal is under the main contractor. Lepas tu number four tu I tulis lagi As the consultants are appointed by the main contractor. So basically you boleh relate lah. Okay kenapa Why is that design liability of a design build contract is under main contractor? Because all the consultants are appointed by the main contractor. Kan? Faham tak? 
So semakin bawah tu dah semakin detail. So it's actually trying to help you. So in summary, basically all the statement, all the statements are true. Semua soalan ini jawapannya adalah betul. Kenapa? Design liability of a traditional contract is not the main contractor liability. Design liability in traditional contract will be under the consultants, okay, uh, responsi responsibility. So who are the consultants? Is uh, the they are architect and engineer. And then design liability of a design build uh, contract is under the main contractor. Yes. Why? Okay. Design and build contract is uh, a single point responsibility contract where the main contractor will appoint everyone including all the consultants, architect, engineer, quantity surveyor, land surveyor, whoever, okay, under the consultant team will be appointed by the main contractor. Okay. Plus, okay, those uh, subcontractor nominated as well as uh, domestic subcontractor okay will be appointed by the main contractor all right so if you could see it's a single point responsibility so in this case single point responsibility the employer doesn't want much risk okay He's trying to reduce much risk. Dia nak kurangkan dia punya risk. Okay. Dalam design. Okay. Dalam uh, contract administration. So apa yang dia buat adalah okay let's say uh, I, I tak nak lah. I tak nak nanti apa-apa semua. Nanti I yang kena kalau di, uh, I punya uh, consultant ada at fault. So basically nanti I pun kena bertanggungjawab sebab main contractor akan cari I. Sebab all the consultant under I. So now I don't want. I tak nak. I nak semuanya tak kisahlah Okay, consultant ke yang buat hal, subcontractor ke yang buat hal Semuanya contractor yang tanggung So, kita opt untuk design and build contract ha, Nampak tak ada difference? Because the client wants to transfer, wishes to transfer as much risk Okay, to the contractor instead of dealing it uh, him, by himself So, kalau dia gunakan design and build contract So basically dia dah transfer risk. So katakanlah ada design uh, problem. Okay so the contractor ni yang akan bertanggungjawab. So kalau dia tak puas hati dengan consultant dia, dia sue lah dia punya um, arkitek tadi. Tapi kalau you tengok secara kontraknya, there's no re direct relationship yang berkontrak itu adalah client as well as main contractor. Alright. Design liability of a traditional contract under the consultant liability who are under the employers. It's true. Okay. Semuanya adalah di bawah consultant's liability. So whoever design will be held liable for their design. So and in traditional contract, the consultants are under employers. And then design liability of a design and build contract is under main contractor. Okay, kita dah cakap juga tadi. As all the consultants are appointed by the main contractor. Design liability of a traditional contract will be the main contractor's liability only if kalau normally tak ada design liability dalam traditional contract only kalau main contractor itu buat propose. Okay, I tak nak guna you punya architect punya design. I nak guna my own design. So, whoever... Uh, design will be liable for their design. So kalau main contractor yang design, so basically liability itu, design liability itu will be transferred to him. Okay. Or kalau dia tak propose new design untuk semua pun, dia ada design some part of the design. Maksudnya dari daripada sebuah building ada macam satu dekat corner, ada satu bilik kecil tu, oh I nak contribute, I punya, I punya design and the architect said okay, kalau you ada expertise please do so. So dia pun buat design tu, tiba-tiba collapse. So in that case, dia perlu liable walaupun secara uh, basisnya, normalnya dalam traditional contract, the contractor tak ada design liability. Ha, nampak tak? Ada exceptional clause lah di situ. Alright. And then, kalau NSC to design some part of the work, the design liability will be under NSC. Remember, whoever design, 
okay, will be held liable to their design. Kalau consultant yang design, so basically all, all the consultant will be responsible for their design if the main contractor took some um, um, of the design, okay, and design uh, themselves. So basically, uh, main contractor to akan held liable because whoever design will be held liable. NSC design, okay, untuk main contractor. So, kalau if uh, whatever happen to that design, collapse ke whatsoever, so basically NSC akan held liable. Okay, clear eh dekat sini? Right. So, kita move kepada, okay, next slide. Okay, so sekarang ni uh, contractors remedy. So, remedy ni, what is remedy? From the word, apa? Remedy. Remedy is macam ganti rugi lah. Okay. So, katakanlah kita punya consultant yang at fault. Okay. Consultant itu bagi design yang salah. Lepas tu supply drawing lambat. Okay. Bila dia supply drawing lambat, all the progress at work will be delayed. Kenapa? Because you couldn't proceed with your work. So, bila dekat site tu tengah tunggu, oh kita kena buat this uh, work now. However, we did not still, we are still waiting for the plans uh, apa ni, by the architect. So, basically, while waiting, uh, dah lima hari tak bagi-bagi lagi drawing. So, dah delay lima hari. If you look at you punya uh, progress report ataupun you punya milestone dekat dalam projek itu, Okay, tengok alamat projek kita dah delay lima hari. By right, by this date, kita dah buat concrete work. Ha, kita sepatutnya dah pour concrete. Tapi while waiting, duk tunggu, 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 the drawings pun tak dapat lagi. So basically, uh, bukannya contractors uh, for. So um, in contract, you tak boleh kata all the time contractor is at fault. Tak semestinya dalam satu-satu satu-satu uh, problem in uh, construction project is entirely contractors fault. Bukan. Tak semuanya salah contractor. Sometimes it could be the client. The client uh, apa ni lambat uh, uh, made up his mind. Dia nak tukar uh, design tapi dia lambat bagi decision. So drag you punya time. So uh, architect promise nak bagi drawing. Lambat bagi drawing. So uh, delay lagi project you. And then uh, you punya QS, okay, lambat keluarkan uh, apa ni, uh, payment certificate. Uh, so ada cash flow disruption dekat situ. So lambat lah you nak buat progress. And then uh, ada lagi uh, weather, okay, ataupun force majeure. Uh, bukannya salah you. Kadang-kadang uh, weather, uh, macam weather kita sekarang very uh, extreme. Very hot, suddenly hujan. Tiba-tiba tengok weather forecast tu, eh sepatutnya panas. You pun dah plan nak nak, nak pour concrete untuk uh, concrete work. Suddenly hujan. Okay, you pun tunggu esok. Rupanya hujan dua minggu non-stop. So, you tak boleh nak pour concrete. Kalau you pour concrete, so concrete you punya mixture tu rosak lah. Dia bukan as uh, strong as uh, it is supposed to be. So, you pun delay. Delay, delay, delay. Hujan non-stop. Banjir siap. Okay, itu adalah force major where Uh, inclement weather, extreme weather, you couldn't control beyond your control. Or you're talking about material. Material dekat dalam kontrak dia dah tulis. So basically brand X, okay, uh, size 200 darab 200 tiles, okay, darab 5 mm thickness. Okay, you pun cari satu Malaysia, you couldn't find it, rupanya ada problem daripada supplier kat China. Supplier China ni tak masuk dah brand X ni, tak masuk dah size 200, darab 200, darab 5 uh, mm. Yang masuk adalah size 300, darab 200, darab 4 mm thickness. So, when it is uh, stated in our contract, okay, the exact uh, brand and the exact size, so you couldn't run from that spec. You couldn't deviate from that spec. Maksudnya kalau dah dalam spec, dekat dalam description, dekat dalam BQ, you dah tulis size berapa sekian-sekian, you tak boleh nak deviate, nak berlari daripada you punya spec itu, you mesti dapatkan exactly the same spec. Okay, kalau you uh, apa ni tak oblique dengan you punya spec itu, 
Okay, you pun dah pasang. Saiznya tak sama. Sepatutnya dalam kontrak 200. Tapi dekat dalam, dekat site you pasang 300. Kenapa? Sebab supplier China tu kata that brand dah tak ada and then kalau nak tunggu maybe akan delay 2 bulan. Okay, so you ambil juga, you pasang dekat site. So whenever architect come and check, they check dengan BQ dan drawing. Eh, I kata brand White Horse. Okay, dia punya size adalah 200 anak 200. Why did you install this? This is not uh, the exact spec as mentioned or stipulated in contract. So you kena hack balik. Okay, cost under you. Kenapa? You tak follow spec. Okay, itu kalau salah you, you ambil juga walaupun dekat dalam kontrak itu dah tulis. Okay, 200 darat 200. So bila you counter balik dengan klien, dia tulis surat, okay, untuk notice, in, to inform that the specific specification, the required specification by you, by the client. So basically it's not uh, available. We have to wait for two months in, in order to get it. So can we change the spec of your uh, tiles? Or do you have any substitute? Okay, substitute, ganti. Instead of guna white horse 200, 200, ada tak any other brand? Okay. So you kena write in writing, inform you punya client sebab takkan you nak tunggu 2 bulan. So you akan hantar, so client akan keluarkan VO. So variation order ni ya VO. Eh, variation order. So variation ini adalah changes. Okay. Changes. Okay, in contract. So for example untuk tiles, okay, uh, specification uh, in contract lain, okay and then uh, apa ni yang you nak pasang okay, you uh, suggest okay, different different tiles due to shortage of supply by the supplier. Okay. So in this case, okay, you punya architect akan keluarkanlah variation order, okay, supaya dia tak nak drag you punya uh, progress. Tadi kalau you kena tunggu dua bulan, kalau you tukar mungkin esok tu dah boleh uh, order, so dalam dua tiga hari dah boleh dapat, terus boleh pasang, so tak akan ada extension of time. So extension of time ataupun EOT. So EOT adalah, okay, extra time or additional time given, okay, uh, for the contractor, okay, to carry out, okay, his work, alright, due to, okay, delay, Okay, due to delay um, by, okay, any other but not contractors. Okay, so kalau contractor yang salah, contractor yang lambat, Dia punya milestone yang lambat, dia punya chart yang lambat, dia yang order material lambat, so kita tak bagi extension of time. So EOT, okay, EOT ni, okay, is granted, okay, granted, okay, and must be applied. Okay. Granted dan must be applied is that Okay, you tahu yang tiba-tiba uh, kita punya weather ni ada um, apa extreme changes. So dah seminggu hujan non-stop, tak boleh nak nak pour concrete, tak boleh nak proceed work. So dekat site pun dah memang uh, apa ni uh, macam banjir so you couldn't uh, proceed with the work. So dah kacau you punya progress of work. So dah delay. Alright. So you pun tak apply extension of time. Okay. Bila you tak apply extension of time, 
it won't be granted. Meaning to say, kalau you tak apply, you tak dapat. So, sama macam other things, kalau uh, you diberikan pengecualian kredit kan, masa you masuk semester one, ada tak yang diberikan pengecualian, pengecualian kredit, kecuali uh, student matrix lah, betul? Ada betul. tak yang diberi uh, pengecualian kredit, PC? Okay, credit exemption Sabrina, you tahu you adalah ex diploma students where you have learned certain of the subject, certain things of the subject, certain topics you have covered during your diploma time. And you knew that you are eligible for credit exemption. You tahu. Okay. Adakah dengan tahu bermaksud you dapat? Sabrina. Uh, tak. Tak. So apa yang you buat dengan credit exemption you? You knew that you are eligible for credit exemption and then you pun duduk diam lah. Bila you masuk kelas, oh saya tak masuk kelas ni sebab saya uh, ada credit exemption. Lepas tu, apa yang you buat Sabrina? Selepas you tahu yang you ada credit exemption. Uh, apply for it lah. Untuk yes. Okay. Uh, Sama uh, macam extension of time. If you don't apply for it, you won't get it. So sama juga macam kontraktor tadi tu. Dia tahu dah hujan dua minggu. Dia duduk je, dia tak apply EOT. Dia beranggapan tak apalah projek delay, not my fault. So I kena dapat EOT sebab bukan salah I. Uh, weather kan? Weather tu is not my control. It's beyond my control. So kalau nak hujan, I couldn't stop the rain. Betul? So dia pun beranggapan it's okay, uh, it's not our fault so basically we'll definitely dapat extension of time. It's a wrong, 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 okay, mindset. Kalau nak extension of time, you have to apply. Sama juga macam credit exemption tadi tu. Kalau you tak buat, you tak apply credit exemption, what will happen? Sabrina? You pun nak tak apa, I dapat credit exemption, you pun pergi tak apply, uh, what will happen? Dia jadi um, apa? Will, will your name be in the system untuk subjek yang sepatutnya di PC tu? So the lecturer uh, assume you have to come into the class. Yes. Yeah. So we lecturers assume that you must be in our class because your name is in the subject. Okay. Same goes. Sama juga macam extension of time. You tak apply, kita assume kalau projek tu habis 31 Disember 2023 yang lalu, kita assume you hand over projek tu 31 Disember 2023. Suddenly, you tak uh, hand over, you said hari tu hujan dua minggu. Hari tu dua minggu. Last time hujan seminggu. So, I uh, akan delay I punya progress ni, I akan hand over dekat you lewat tiga minggu. So it's not the way of doing things. So apa yang you perlu buat adalah so extra uh, extension of time or extra time given tu okay diberikan hanya jika you apply. You apply okay dia akan tengok okay dia pun tengok weather forecast dia pun tengok all the evidences all the proof yang you submit So dia kata okey lah betul. Kalau kita tengok uh, last time memang hujan lebat non-stop two weeks. Okey and then sampai banjir. Alright so kita kata okey lah kita akan bagi untuk uh, 14 week uh, sorry 14 days punya uh, additional time. Alright remember uh, EOT okey must be applied and after that baru granted. Okey. Maksudnya kalau tak apply, tak dapat, you cannot assume that you memang dapat extension of time. Sometimes you apply for 90 days, sometimes you are given only 45 days. So that's why kena apply untuk berapa hari dan berapa hari yang approved or granted tu dia akan extendkan daripada 31 Disember 2024 tambah 45 hari. 
So after that, kalau delay, kita akan charge liquidated as a ten damage LAD. So pernah dengar LAD? Pernah dengar tak LAD? Pernah dengar tak LAD? Tak pernah. Okay. LAD is that, okay macam tadi saya kata sepatutnya you habis projek you 31 Disember 2023. Tiba-tiba 31 Disember 2023 tu tak siap bagi projek you. Dan bila check you tak apply untuk you punya extension of time dan bila tak apply tak ada additional time, tak ada extra time given or granted So by right you dah lambat. So bila you lambat, okay, apa impact kepada klien? Okay, katakanlah sekarang ni I nak buat commercial units. Ada 30 commercial units, sepatutnya I dah boleh uh, dapat kunci building yang dah siap pada 31 Disember 2023 yang lalu. However, due to your delay, So I tak boleh dapat kunci, I tak boleh sewakan, I tak boleh jual I punya building. So what happen? I rugi ke I untung? Rugi. Yes. Katakanlah by 31 Disember tu you dah bagi key dekat I. Lepas tu I dah boleh the day after I dah boleh Uh, advertise untuk rent ataupun untuk jual. So basically kalau satu unit enam ratus ribu. So I kena delay untuk sembilan puluh hari. You belum siap. So kalau I sewakan unit tu selama tiga bulan. Tiga bulan itu adalah tiga ribu sebulan. I dah rugi sembilan ribu satu unit. Kalau tiga puluh unit Sembilan ribu darab tiga puluh unit. So berapa yang rugi? Tiga ratus ribu dalam masa sembilan puluh hari. Okay. LAD, so basically LAD, okay LAD, uh, tu bukan, itu bukan tau. I tulis je. Okay. LAD adalah liquidated, okay, as certain damage. Okay. Maksudnya yang memang terang dan nyata you lambat, I mengalami kerugian. So I nak charge dekat you. Okay ada some of the contract. It depends eh dia dah kaklik. Ha, contohnya macam commercial house tadi. So satu hari you lewat, I charge you enam ribu. For example, per day. So you lambat sembilan puluh hari so kita akan darab dengan enam ribu so kita akan charge you LED so klien akan charge kalau you ada yang sampai kalau dia buat macam hotel okay hotel kan kalau you lambat lambat lagi dia punya uh, launching so satu bilik uh, katakanlah tiga ratus tengah ke enam ratus kalau dekat situ ada seratus dua puluh bilik uh, so you just imagine berapa kerugian hotel tersebut So sometimes don't be surprised ada yang sampai seratus ribu per day. Okay so ini adalah consequences kalau contractor itu tak siapkan on time dan tak ada extension of time given. Okay let's say dia dah siap 31 Disember 2024 dapat EOT 3 bulan tapi tak siap juga. So pengiraan LED ini adalah from okay, tarikh yang selepas EOT tu. So dia tak siap dalam dua bulan selepas EOT punya date. So kita akan charge dia selama enam puluh hari. Okay so this is LED. So LED ini adalah impose on the contractor. So remedies ini adalah ganti rugi. So maksudnya kalau LED ni negative thing lah. Client impose dekat uh, uh, contractor sebab dia menyebabkan client kerugian. Kalau remedies, okay, kalau remedies, so basically remedies ini adalah ganti rugi. Ha, bukan salah contractor tapi sebab dia hujan dua minggu and then uh, the inclement weather or the extreme weather is beyond the contractor's control. Kita pun tak boleh control weather. So kita bagilah remedy dekat dia ganti rugi dalam bentuk 
time, extra uh, time ataupun extension of time. Okay, tapi again, you have to remember, it is must, uh, it must be applied, okay, and then only it will be granted. Kalau tak apply, tak dapat, tak boleh beranggapan, okay, I am um, supposed to get. Uh, tak, tak ada isu I am supposed to get. Kena apply, baru dapat. Okay, and then variation order, sama juga. Not your fault, okay, uh, client tiba-tiba nak tukar design. Dia tukar design, uh, here and there, vari uh, uh, dia buat variation order. Lepas tu, you kena tunggu uh, uh, design changes itu sebab kalau you proceed, takut you kena robohkan balik sebab tengah ada variation, variation order by the client. Variation order by, okay, the architect. So, kita panggil dia AI. So, AI itu adalah architect's instruction. Kalau EI, kita panggil dia engineer's instruction. So, dalam kerja-kerja architectural, yang akan keluarkan VO adalah architect. Dalam kerja-kerja engineering, okay, ataupun uh, civil and structure, engineer yang akan keluarkan instruction, arahan. So, arahan, okay, perubahan. So, variation order ini adalah arahan perubahan. Siapa yang akan keluarkan? Arkitek untuk kerja-kerja uh, architectural. Engineer untuk kerja-kerja civil and structure. So, AI, architect instruction. EI adalah engineer's instruction. So, arahan arkitek, arahan engineer. Alright. So, ke dalam kes ini, got nothing to do with the contractor. So, contractor ini dia tak tahu apa-apa, tiba-tiba contractor change my mind. I want to, I, I think I want to, instead of use uh, uh, this piling, why not kita use uh, this piling? Or, you know, I want to change a bit dekat uh, porch tu, uh, instead of using this, I nak you guna uh, apa ni, polycarbonate uh, awning. Uh, you know why? Because it looks uh, aesthetic. So, you can choose any color that you want. Uh, macam tu. So, Klien uh, ni tak made up uh, his mind Apa dia nak So bila dia keep changing Basically dia akan interrupt your progress So in this case okay, Ganti rugi yang kita bagi dekat contractor Adalah dari segi variation order Any Okay dari segi masa Okay kita akan ganti dekat extension of time Dari segi cost Kita akan bayar VO So selalu dengar kan Uh, ada VO tak? Bayar VO tak? VO tu dibayar ke tak? Okay, remember. Variation order will be only be paid, okay, kalau contractor is not at fault. Kalau contractor yang salah, okay, dia macam tadi I cerita spec tu, dia pandai-pandai tukar. Okay, lepas tu dia apply untuk variation order. I nak variation order lah sebab I nak claim. I tukar hari tu. Uh, tiles tu mahal sikit daripada uh, tiles yang sepatutnya I guna. Tapi bukan salah I. Tiles tu tak ada shortage, short supply. Bukan I tak nak beli, tak ada. Okay. So, kalau memang bukan salah kontraktor, baru dibayar. Kalau that's your fault, so basically the client won't pay any single cent to you. Kenapa? That's your fault. I won't pay anything. Kalau ada changes, okay, dari, okay, team consultant, team arkitek yang semuanya tadi kalau kita tengok dekat, uh, apa, kita punya matrix itu, kalau ada changes daripada this team, akan keluar variation order. Tapi kalau ada changes daripada this team, VO tak dapat, tak akan dikeluarkan. Kenapa? That's your fault. Okay, you settle your own problem. So, kita takkan bayar you, you buat sendiri, you cover cost you sendiri. Tapi kalau arkitek yang keluarkan AI, engineer keluarkan AI, employer pun keep changing the design, okay, and then keep changing the spec, okay, quantity surveyor pun tak follow spec, So basically here, okay, akan keluar, kita keluarkan design. Eh, kita akan keluarkan um, VO.
Okay. Kalau kat sini punya fork, orang-orang ni punya fork, orang-orang ni siapa? Orang siapa? Orang-orang ni siapa? Yang belah kanan ni? Orang-orang ni siapa? Orang-orang nanti -orang kan? Kalau orang-orang kontraktor -orang sendiri yang ada problem nak keluarkan VO, so basically VO will not be entertained. Tak, tak layan lah eh. Bukan salah I, salah you. So I tak bayar you. Tapi kalau orang-orang uh, kat sini yang buat salah, employer ke, arkitek dia ke, engineer ke, QS dia. Sebab dia semua adalah satu team nampak? Dia work under employer. So VO will be issued and will be paid. Okay. For, that, for example, dia tukar piling. Engineer kata, oh sorry, uh, you know what? Uh, When we enter the site, uh, the piling is uh, not uh, suitable for uh, the current uh, site. So we have to change uh, instead of RC piling, why not we, have, we use uh, SpanPow. So uh, there will be increment in um, cost, uh, basically around 200k, uh, 200,000. So uh, the client said, what is the consequences if I don't? So the engineer will say, if you don't, so basically your building will collapse. So either you change it now or your building might collapse later. So what happened then uh, was that the employer will say, yes, okay, uh, you issued out um, uh, EI, engineer's uh, instruction to the contractor. Okay, ask them to get a span pile instead of RC piles, okay, and the remaining cost will be paid by the employer. Ha, nampak? So dalam case ini, okay, VO will be issued and will be paid. So katakanlah dah dulu guna RC piles yang murah itu around uh, 300,000, now dah jadi 500,000 due to the design change. So Uh, employer akan bayar another 200k itu additional. Tapi kalau kontraktor yang datang, oh uh, sorry uh, basically uh, I tersalah beli uh, uh, piling. Sepatutnya I order uh, piling ni tapi I terorder ni. So boleh tak kita tukar instead of uh, RC kita tukar kepada SpanPal. VO will not be issued and will not be paid. Kenapa? That's your problem, that's your fault. I won't entertain, I won't pay. Ha, nampak kat situ. This is a traditional uh, uh, relationship ni. Okay? Alright. So that's why kalau you tengok based on I punya uh, explanation tadi. Okay, employer ni as much as he could nak transfer all the risk. Now kalau arkitek yang tersalah buat design, engineer, quantity surveyor dia tersalah buat BQ. Semuanya uh, liability itu kepada employer. Kenapa? Sebab dia punya team kan. So dia terpaksa Uh, had liable for that. Okay, between contractor, contractor kata, oh you know what, you punya QS tersalah lah. Sepatutnya in BQ, dia ada buat uh, SCMN and script untuk uh, tiles. Tapi that particular item uh, is not available. So you have to pay me extra. And then employer terpaksa kata yes. And then dia akan tanya QS dia, kenapa you termis item? Oh sorry, I overlook that. Uh, tapi ada cost implication. Implication dia berapa? RM30,000. So employer kena bayar. Kenapa? Quantity survey itu under dia. Tapi kalau dekat design build contract tadi saya cerita, as much as he wish, dia nak transfer all the risk dekat main contractor. Oh, QS tu siapa yang lantik? You kan? So basically, I won't pay for variation order. Kenapa or from the beginning you tak you tak check BQ of your quantity survey before you submit to me? Okay, nampak tak? Kenapa people shift? Daripada design and build contract kepada design uh, and build contract. Daripada traditional contract kepada design build contract. Why? Because the main contractor will hold single point responsibility whereby everything happens under him, he will be held liable. Okay? Dapat tak uh, dia punya the reasons being kenapa uh, design and build, kenapa traditional uh, contract. Okay. And then kita move kepada remedy tadi. Alright. So kita ada disruption allowances and then kita ada loss ex and expense, kita ada determination, kita ada interest claim, kita ada non payment. So ni semua adalah remedy kepada kontraktor kalau ada fault dekat dalam kontrak. So 
kalau disruption allowance, loss and expense ini, determination ini, interest claim ataupun non payment ini semuanya dah ada dekat dalam standard form of contract. Each one of it. Ada specific clause untuk all this extension of time, variation order, disruption allowances, loss and expense, determination, semua ada. So you just read accordingly and uh, kalau kontraktor tu layak, okay so basically you you just remedy the kontraktor lah accordingly. Alright, okay. Now kita pergi kepada duty of one of the kontraktor. So kontraktor ini, okay, ada duty. Okay. Eh, dia ada dua uh, school of thought. So even kalau kita refer uh, previous court cases or uh, apa ni uh, past uh, court cases, ada certain uh, uh, judges okay, the verdict, the verdict uh, was that uh, contractor ni ada duty to one. Ada some of it kata tak ada duty to one. So the case by case lah. So kalau you nak explain on this, kalau ada duty to one, so it depends on which case you are referring to and you boleh cerita pasal apa verdict of the case. So kalau kita cerita pasal contractor, so contractor ini, okay, dia akan deal, deal with defect in design. Kenapa? Sebab uh, bila dia tengah buat construction, along the way tu dia akan notice lah ada defect in design. Tapi design made by dia ke? Design tu dibuat oleh dia ke? Uh. Tak, okay. So, design akan made kalau dekat traditional contract. Design akan made by the architect or engineer uh, or the consultant team lah. Okay, and then, eh kenapa ni? Okay. And then, dia juga akan deal dengan economic options. Why instead of use this method, kenapa tak guna this method? Ataupun if you use this method, basically it, it will cost you lower. Kalau kita guna this method or this uh, tool, this equipment, this plan akan cost you uh, lower as compared to whatever yang uh, engineer or architect uh, suggested or recommended or effective methods. Okay, why don't you use this method instead of this method? So, this method lagi effective and cepat. Okay, and then lagi uh, study dia punya connection. And then site condition. Oh, site condition ni actually uh, instead of using RC PAL, kita kena guna uh, uh, SPAN PAL or general in everything and anything. Okay, so duty to warn tu kalau dia nak warn, so it is advisable to be in writing. So disarankan, uh, okay, untuk bagi dalam writing kepada employer, architect, engineer or project manager or QS. Okay, kenapa must be in writing? Because later on, ini akan release uh, contractor daripada any blame later on. Kalau dia tak buat in writing, so mungkin akan ada okay, drama whereby push and pull where employer kata contractor, contractor kata architect, architect kata engineer, engineer kata contractor, contractor kata project manager, uh, contractor kata QS. So akan ada this kind of drama. So to avoid Whatever you do, you must do in writing. Okay, duty to one. So kalau dia nak one, dia rasa macam oh, I might be in trouble later so I have to warn. Walaupun I have no duty to one, tapi I need to tell the employer about this defect. If not, the employer might put the blame on me. So apa yang contractor boleh buat adalah contractor needs to write to the employer. So maksudnya in black and white in writing. Bukannya hanya cakap uh, dekat meet, habis meeting, oh boss you know what I rasa you kena tukarlah kita punya design uh, engineer ni. I rasa this engineer tu salah. Tak boleh hanya guna oral. Okay mesti in writing. Okay in any matters, any cases kena guna uh, caranya adalah in writing. Okay, so kita pergi kepada past cases kalau kita tengok dekat sini. So basically ada uh, five eh um, cases kalau kita check, right? Okay. 
Okay. So, satu duty to one, University of Glasgow uh, versus William Whitfield and John Ling, uh, 1988. Okay. The court uh, stated that the contractor has no duty to one of the architects. Okay. Okay. So has no uh, the contractor has no duty to warn of the architect's work defect. Okay. Whereas uh, the architect did the design unless the client is placing a special reliance on the contractor. So basically, kalau according to this court case 1988 uh, between University of Glasgow and William Whitwell, okay, it uh, was stated that the contractor has no duty to warn. If he found out any architect's work defect, okay, because the architect did the design, so basically unless the client is placing a special reliance on him, that from the beginning you dah kata, so you have to uh, apa ni, um, uh, check the architect's design. Uh, I'm afraid uh, the architect's design might uh, be sloppy and whatnot. So basically dia tak ada duty of one. Uh, kecuali kalau klien tu kata uh, you please uh, check out uh, the architect's design and what not. So dia macam relying uh, on uh, the contractor punya expertise. And then uh, Brunswick Construction and, and uh, Nolan uh, 1974 okay the the court said that uh, the contractor certainly has a duty to warn if if the architect who produced the drawing is no longer taking part in the project. So kalau architect dah tak ada, architect yang dulu originally okay, did all the design and monitoring the work, do inspection and whatnot, dah tak ada sekarang ni. So basically the contractor certainly has a duty to warn. Okay. And then at work Lindenberg versus Joe Canning 1992. So it is better to put the notice in writing like like we said okay if anything happen in what reason in what matter okay what cases so what notice okay you need to uh, put the notice in writing if the architect or the engineer or the employer ignore it so basically no blame can be attached to the contractor so kena work smart lah so even dia tak ada duty of one tapi just in case okay kalau ada uh, a blaming game between the consultants as well as the contractor. So basically, uh, you have to uh, carry on with a uh, writing uh, notice and then if those people ignore it, so basically tak akan ada blame lah because oh, I, I warned you before uh, that the temporary structure might be collapsed uh, tapi dia tak nak dengar. So basically, uh, saya dah, you know, dah lepas tangan. Kenapa? I've warned you before. Don't say I never warned you. Okay. And then Edward, uh, okay dah. Okay, plan construction PLC uh, versus uh, Clive Adams Associate. Okay, uh, number two in uh, year 2000. The subcon concern about the temporary work designed by the engineers. Engineers rejected and instructed to use uh, original design. So, they dah, they dah, uh, the subcon of the main contractor ni concern. Sebab uh, the way uh, the temporary work designed by the engineers look uh, uh, sloppy. So the subcontractor um, uh, proposed a new design uh, to the engineer but the engineer rejected. So the engineer instructed to use original design, my design. Use my design, not your design. But then again, the temporary work uh, collapsed. So client sued both contractor and engineer. Okay. Dia hanya menyatakan concern uh, kepada engineer tapi maybe not in writing. So ada blaming game lah di situ. Why? Because you mentioned bila you uh, inform I. I. Do you have a proof? Uh, did you write to me? You are the black and white tak? So kalau kita pergi court without any black and white so basically we'll definitely lost kan. Kita mesti sebab kita tak ada uh, bukti uh, apa uh, black and white. Okay same goes macam uh, system problem kat UITM ni for example you dah register. Suddenly bila you nak print out, you pun dah pergi kelas all the way. Suddenly you nak pergi kelas, uh, 
you nak pergi kelas, you not, you dah pergi kelas, bila you nak pergi exam, you notice that nama you tak ada dalam exam. Kenapa? Dia kata sebab you tak register that particular subject. So, the importance of you let, uh, apa ni, validate you punya course uh, as well as you print hard copy tu supaya whenever anything happen to you uh, kalau tiba-tiba sistem tu problem, tiba-tiba dia ter uh, kick nama you out of the system uh, katanya you tak register, you tak validate a course so you have a proof. See, uh, I've print, I, I, I've printed my hard copy version. Look at this. I've registered. So basically I am, uh, I I should be allowed to sit for exam. Uh, you tak boleh lah kata I tak boleh ambil exam. Tapi if you tak ada all those in black and white, you just cakap tak saya dah register, saya dah register. What will happen to you? Ha. Kalau setakat hanya cakap tak uh, betul madam saya dah register. Uh, so what proof, what proof do you have? You rasa uh, the pengawas peperiksaan akan allow you to go in uh, the exam hall tak? Uh. Yes. So itu adalah one important um, uh, practice eh. So whatever you do just print out, keep, uh, do a safe keep untuk you punya documents. So whatever happen, so at least you ada bukti. Uh, I uh, just uh, especially lah bila kita uh, dekat dalam satu sistem organisation yang sangat ramai eh. Okay, me myself uh, pun ada problem. Um, I uh, pergi blog D untuk register untuk post grad. So, I ni ada isi satu borang menunjukkan yang I uh, tak perlu hantar progress report uh, for example. Okay, suddenly uh, I pelik. I punya application tu it, it has been three months. I pun pelik. So, I contacted. Uh, memang took some time tapi tak adalah sampai tiga bulan. So, I terus pergi blog D. I tanya. I said Uh, saya dah apply for this. I even fill up all the forms that I have submitted and what not. So, uh, tapi I, I I never receive anything uh, regarding that matter. So, dia kata uh, dia tak receive borang I. So, I said uh, I did submit my borang. I still remember. I even went to Block D uh, for it myself. Okay. Uh, macam jauh sangat Block D kita kan. Uh, dekat je. So, I jalan lah di sana. So, the uh, the uh, admin staff said dia tak receive borang I, I tak pernah submit. Okay. Tapi nas I bijak. I kan memang uh, particular on all this thing. Semasa I hantar borang tu, I buat dua copy. So, satu copy I submit dekat dia. Satu copy I said, you uh, uh, boleh tak uh, you tolong uh, acknowledge receipt. So, dia kata okay boleh tak ada masalah. So, dia chop dekat I yang uh, bertarikh Uh, sekejap eh, I pergi balik hari tu around uh, Januari. I submit uh, October. <coughs> so I memang letak uh, I punya document properly. So dia kata I tak submit, borang I tak ada dekat office tu. So I terus datang balik bilik I, I ambil dokumen tu I tunjuk dekat dia. I have submitted, ini you dah sign dekat sini. I dah submit Oktober yang lepas. So, Oktober, November, Disember, Januari. So, I have submitted. So, dia terus terdiam. Dia kata tak apalah submit semula uh, balik. Boleh tak tolong isi balik borang I hilang. Okay. So, lesson learn adalah uh, please eh, whatever you do, uh, especially kalau you submit assignment ke, okay, make sure that the lecturer uh, receive it uh, properly. Okay, uh, selalunya tak adalah kes seperti itu tapi katakanlah you terhantar lewat pada orang lain. Make sure jangan terus letak aja. Make sure the lecturer receive your assignment. Takut nanti tiba-tiba uh, kalau dia tak receive your assignment sebab you hantar lewat pada orang lain tak sama macam orang lain. So basically takut you tak ada marks dekat uh, you punya assignment tu. Okay, make sure lepas you submit kalau you nak letak ke you just uh, madam uh, I've submitted eh in your box uh, snap picture. Saya dah submit uh, this assignment on scan scan scan. Okay and then boleh check balik. Alright. Okay to be on the safe side. So last kali. Okay GA Brown versus Core 2006. Reasonably competent contractor should have reported any problems to the client. So I've mentioned just now. Okay selalunya tak ada issue on duty to one. So basically there has no duty uh, to one. Okay. Uh, of the contractor kepada klien. 
Tapi untuk GA Brown and Carr 2006 ini, dia punya verdict a bit different whereby dia kata a reasonable, uh, reasonably a competent contractor by right should have reported. Kalau you are truly a truly a competent ataupun a very capable contractor, right from the beginning you dah boleh nampak, you dah boleh detect what went wrong with the drawing plan ataupun with the site. So basically you have a duty to warn kalau in that case. So in this case, okay, kalau uh, you nak cerita pasal duty to warn, uh, basically tak ada duty to warn. So unless kalau memang a special project yang memang ada special reliance, okay, and then to be on the safe side, you have to put it in writing so that tak ada blaming game. Uh, so in this case ada blaming game lah. The contractor ni, uh, Uh, dia sepatutnya tak ada duty of one uh, tapi oleh sebab the client tu tak puas hati client tu kata no uh, sebab by right kalau dia competent dia kenalah uh, report any problem to me. Uh, so the verdict of GA Brown dengan ni adalah contradict. Uh, so dalam kes ini dia ada duty to warn uh, because of the blaming game. Sebab dia hanya cakap je dia hanya warn orally, verbally dia tak uh, warn secara writing. So kalau dia warn secara writing So perhaps uh, dia tak dia tak akan uh, apa at fault lah in this case eh right okay and then kita ada employers agent so who is employers agent basically employers agent kita part four ni kita akan cover construction professionals and then contractual duties contract administration and design professionals okay. Okay, so construction professionals are those okay involved in design, contract administration macam QS. So kalau QS kita tak involved in design, kita um, advise more on contract administration. Kita buat tender document, kita buat contract, kita buat BQ and then translate brief into design. Okay, itu semuanya adalah kerja-kerja designers, consultant, architect, engineer and then supervise construction. So supervise construction ini more towards architect and engineer lah. You tahu tak uh, dekat site ada COW? Ada kau? Ada RA? Ada RE? Tahu tak? Tahu COW tu. Ha, tahu tak? Tapi tak tahu tugas dia apa. Okay, so COW adalah clerk of work. So dia di bawah arkitek. RA adalah residence arkitek. Uh, macam resident doktor tu kan. Uh, dia reside dekat situ, dia duduk dekat situ. Resident arkitek. Okay. And then uh, kalau resident engineer pun sama. So dia reside dekat site, dia di bawah engineer. So kalau professional engineer ni hardly lah you nampak dekat site dia hanya datang setiap sebulan sekali time meeting tu sahaja. So macam mana dia dapat all those information daripada RA ataupun uh, RE dia. So arkitek akan dapat information daripada RA dia, resident arkitek and then uh, engineer akan dapat uh, information daripada R, uh, RE dia, uh, resident engineer. So arkitek akan dapat information daripada RA, engineer akan dapat information daripada RE. And then kita juga ada, uh, ini dekat site eh. Dia bukan uh, dikira professional tau, dia adalah orang yang reside dekat site. So kena tahulah selain daripada arkitek yang selalu pergi meeting setiap bulan sekali tu je. So kita ada dekat site. Okay, ada RA dengan RE as well as ada COW. So COW itu di bawah arkitek. Tapi dia bukan part and parcel of construction professional eh. Dia adalah uh, those working under uh, arkitek untuk uh, monitor ataupun uh, supervise uh, site. Okay, tapi at least you tahulah kalau orang sebut RRA ke RE ke eh, now you know COW. So you tahu itu adalah all those yang bekerja dekat site. Okay, report kepada professional architect dan professional engineer yang datang meeting sebulan sekali tu je. Okay, dan uh, quantity surveyors lah tapi kita tak ada QS dekat, kita tak ada QS dekat site. Tugas kita hanyalah datang setiap uh, sebulan untuk buat interim payment. 
Alright. Input kita, kita dapatkan daripada COW, RA, RE and then kita akan discuss dengan arkitek berapa percentage kita nak bayar dekat uh, contractor tu based on the uh, progress dekat site. So, arkitek akan sign. Uh, uh, do you know, do, did you know that dekat interim certificate kita tu ada dua site. Selepas QS dah settlekan uh, semua uh, interim payment calculation, okay dah tahu dah bayar RM200,000 dekat uh, contractor for example. So one side, okay QS akan sign, one side architect uh, akan sign. So maksudnya interim certificate itu mestilah certified by architect juga. Bukannya QS semata-mata yang sign eh. Ada dua side, side by side, satu architect, satu uh, QS. Alright, sebab whatever amount yang stipulated ataupun agreed to pay untuk kontraktor, arkitek mesti agree juga being the uh, um, employer's agent. Okay, contractual duties dia uh, ada banyak lah. Okay, design, examination of site, okay and then delivery of drawing. Ha, ni kerja siapa ni semua? Ha, mana yang kerja kita? Ha, cari. Mana yang kerja QS? Ha, mana kerja QS? Okay, lagi. Okay, lagi. Okay. Okay, apa lagi? Examination of site kita buat tak? Delivery drawing kita buat tak? Information of instruction kita tak buat. Instruction tak buat. Special duties tak buat. Knowledge ni semua. Kita, ini je yang QS buat. Selain daripada tu adalah uh, consultant uh, lain yang buat. Especially um, architect lah. So don't be surprised. Uh, the reasons being why architect is being paid higher as compared to other consultants is this. Sebab dia banyak uh, liability and responsibility contractual duties kat dalam satu-satu projek. Eh. So as compared to kita, kita tak banyak um, uh, contractual duties. Kita hanya buat some portion of it. It's just that kita punya BQ lah yang macam a bit hassle. Eh. Right. Okay. Liability and risk, expectation and demand of reasonable degree of skills and care. So ada negligent misstatement. Okay and then ada professional negligence. Okay and then ada expectation for professionalism. And then ada contractual duty. Okay. Uh, I bagi you uh, break sekejap lima minit boleh tak? Sebab uh, sakit pula tekan air ni lah. Sebab rasanya kita ni dah exit dua jam ke uh, kelas? Hampir dua jam lah. Hampir. Okay, I bagi, bagi I uh, ni sekejap sakit tekak lah. Okay, sekejap eh. Uh, kan I terminum air pula. Okay, okay. Sekejap eh. <coughs>
Ah, uh, okey, semua okey ke? Semua okey ke? Masih okey ke? Okey, sikit lagi. Okey, kita habiskan. Alright. So basically, uh, kita ada expectation and demand for reasonable degree of skills and care. So yang you perlu yang you perlu uh, wedding wedding yang you perlu uh, apa ni take into uh, you punya uh, important uh, ni adalah uh, yang I type tadi dekat you punya chat box itu adalah standard uh, of care of a professional. Okay satu lagi adalah uh, apa tu tadi apa yang tulis dekat chat box tu? Reasonable skill and care. Yes okay reasonable uh, skills and care. Okay so kalau kita tengok dekat sini okay being a professional so kita uh, still tak lari daripada being negligent lah. So negligent adalah kecuaian. So kalau uh, professional, okay so dia ada uh, empat type yang uh, kita kena aware of. So satunya adalah negligent misstatement. So kalau kita tengok Hadley Burn dengan Heller 1964 ini, in this case uh, basis dia adalah negligent misstatement whereby arkitek ni dia ada Uh, buat satu misstatement. Okay so the court uh, stated that uh, by right uh, being uh, a consultant ataupun a, a special person ataupun uh, the close person next to the client uh, sebab apa-apa yang bagi advice dekat the client adalah usually dia punya arkitek ataupun dia punya agent. So being uh, an employer's agent as a professional So uh, mestilah avoid uh, any kind of uh, misstatement. So kalau dia ada buat misstatement, so basically dia adalah uh, negligence lah, dia ada buat uh, kecuaian uh, dalam memberi uh, kenyataan ataupun dalam memberi information. Okay, so dalam kes Hadley Burn ni, okay, a special relationship between a plaintiff and defendant So there must be a reliant place by the plaintiff. The plaintiff itu adalah the client lah. Okay sebab bila dia lantik seseorang itu sebagai dia punya uh, employee's agent. So basically uh, ada ada satu uh, strong relationship ataupun special relationship. Okay whereby the uh, client ataupun the employer place a special reliance on dia. Kenapa? Why did the appoint uh, the architect on the first place rather than others, uh, other architects, okay? So dah ada very strong bond, ada very special relationship between those two. So sepatutnya negligent in misstatement ini should be avoided, alright? So an architect, for example, owes his employer a duty, okay, to use reasonable skill and care to prevent injury and uh, damage uh, to uh, the employer. And then this duty stems from the proximity between the parties and the assumptions of responsibility of the design. So basically negligent in misstatement ini uh, by right uh, should be avoided by the professional. Tak sepatutnya dilakukan, sepatutnya uh, dielakkan lah uh, sebagai professional untuk buat kecuaian dalam memberikan any uh, advice ataupun any statement. Alright. And then the second one adalah professional uh, negligence. So bolam of fine hospital management, the basic test for professional skill and care is whether other qualified person practicing the same profession, profession would have taken the same action. So architect uh, will be tested against the conduct of other architects. So maksudnya di sini professional negligence ini adalah bila dia uh, buat sesuatu conduct, okay for example, okay kalau dia memberikan uh, apa di uh, apa di, di, disalahkan, okay on uh, professional negligence whereby kalau diberi satu um, situation, okay kalau diberikan satu situation, okay uh, ada empat arkitek. Arkitek A, B, C, D. So semuanya akan diberikan uh, soalan yang sama dan situasi yang sama. 
adakah kon, uh, uh, kitab A ini okey B dan C dan D ini akan memberikan answer yang sama. So meaning to say that whenever uh, you are put in a difficult situation so the solution must be the same or at par. Maksudnya tak boleh lah bagi satu situation and difficulties tapi you punya <coughs> you punya solution itu okay adalah solution yang akan uh, menyusahkan employer dan solution itu memberi uh, ke <coughs> kerugian kepada employer you. Okay so katakanlah Contractor A, eh, sorry, uh, kita A, B, C and D. So, dia diberi satu situation, okay, uh, satu situation. So, adakah uh, solution yang attack A bagi sama ataupun setara, okay, dengan B, C and D. Kalau A, B, C, okay, bagi solution yang sama dan setara at par. Maksudnya, based on the knowledge, professional knowledge semua tu at par. Maksudnya, okay lah, dia good to go. Tapi kalau arkitek D ni, dia bagi solutions yang tak at par dengan yang tiga orang lagi ni. So maksudnya dia boleh dikenakan sebagai professional negligence lah. Dia tak professional lah. Kenapa? Kalau tiga orang itu boleh fikir to that extent as a professional, the solution would be A, B, C, D. Why won't arkitek D, okay, having the same professional um, title, having the same professional license, okay, did not, okay, act as A, B, C tadi tu. Okay, that is professional negligence. So, the statement is that, okay, so uh, to check whether ada qualified, uh, to check whether professional skills and care is well taken care ke tak. So, test dia adalah whether a qualified person practicing the same profession would have taken the same action. So macam saya cakap tadi lah, kalau A, B, C tadi ni, dia bagi the same solution or at par with each other. So dia dah reflect the level of professionalism dia. Tapi D ni bagi uh, solution yang out of nowhere, lepas tu tak reflect professionalism dia. Okay and then akan bawa difficulties kepada employer and bawa rugi kepada employer. So basically, dia boleh be held as professional negligence. And then expectation for professionalism dalam WMP construction, uh, UK uh, limited uh, versus pool. So dekat dalam WMP construction ini, where a professional man held himself out as a having uh, especially high skills and had been retained from on that basis, he is judged by the standards of those professionals to have the special professional skill. So kalau kita expectationnya adalah buat BQ, okay, uh, zero error, zero defect, okay, kepada kita punya employer. So kita perlulah di judge uh, accordingly. Maksudnya kalau you say that you are that professional, zero defect, uh, zero uh, damage kepada employer, so you have to prove that. Okay, and then kita ada contractual uh, duties. Okay, contractual duties itu. Okay, dalam case Kensington uh, versus Wetton uh, 1985. Okay, so uh, in this case contractual duties. Uh, tulis yang ni. Tulis kejap this one. The last case, okay. The last case, Aina. Nick Nurdini Amani ada? Ya, Madam. Okay, boleh google case itu dan explain dekat saya. Lepas tu saya nak seorang uh, lelaki kejap. Siapa yang belum lelaki? Dah habis kan lelaki dalam kelas kita dipanggil? Eh you all ni berapa ramai je lelaki? Darwish dah kan? Alif? Dah ada. Alif dah ada panggil eh? Saya tak sebut pun nama dia tadi. Dah tadi. 
Farish? Dah eh? Ah, belum. Okay, Farish. You and siapa tadi I sebut? Dini tu? Ya. Yeah. Ha, oh. Macam uh, adik uh, Jananik punya husband pula Dini-Dini ni. Ha. Okay. So you and Farish. Okay, kejap lagi explain on uh, court case yang tu. Yang mana? Yang contact? The last one. Yes, uh, Kensington. Yes, betul. Okay, and then kita ada contract administrator. So siapa adalah contract administrator? Typically architect uh, or engineer or other appointed professional. Okay, act as employer's agent or independent uh, certifier. So you have to remember that, okay, employer's agent ini ataupun uh, contract administrator ini, dia ada dual role. So role-nya adalah, okay, based on uh, Sutcliffe uh, versus <coughs> Takrah 1974, architect has two different types of function. Satu untuk act on his employer's instruction, okay, whether he's agree or not, kalau dalam uh, contract administration. Satu lagi, in matters requiring professional skill, he must form an act on his own. So that's why satu employees agent. So uh, whatever employers uh, instruct ataupun um, uh, requires. So basically he needs to fulfill of those uh, requirement. And then second thing in professional uh, matters, dia kena act independently whereby dia kena act professionally. So dia tak boleh, okay, uh, depend on employers punya instruction. Kalau dalam kes-kes Uh, professional for example eh? Okay uh, Arkitek. Arkitek tadi I mention dalam interim certificate Desain ke tak? Desain ke tak bersama-sama dengan QS? Sign Okay desain interim certificate Okay so QS Pun sign So both of them Discuss on the percentage of The interim certificate agreed Okay upon payment to the contractor So basically what happen is that architect tadi ni dia act as semasa dia sign um, dia sign interim certificate tadi dia act as apa? Dia act dia act as apa? Dia act as apa? Employer's agent ataupun dia act as professional? independent ke? <laughs> ha. Dia act as apa? Dia act as uh, employer agent ataupun dia act as professional punya skill? Professional. Yes. Sebab bila dia pergi site, bila dia discuss dengan QS, berapa percentage? Katakanlah you kena bayar 50% progress daripada work uh, apa ni work done on site. You kena bayar 50% sebab Contractor dah buat kerja 50% Kalau you act as Employer's agent Semasa buat interim certificate tu Client you akan cakap Instead of you bayar dia 50% You bayar dia 30% je I tak nak bayar dia banyak Boleh dia Boleh tak dia intercept Lepas tu dia interfere Lepas tu dia cakap dekat QS dengan uh, Arkitek uh, I tak nak bayar 50% I nak you bayar 30% je Tapi work done on site 50% So in this case interim certificate dia act as professional people. Okay so dia mesti reflect dia punya professional skills. Okay bukannya dia reflect dia punya role sebagai employer's agent. Okay nampak eh. So architect ada than that. Okay dia nak, dia nak pergi ke majlis uh, apa local authority. Okay, uh, local authority uh, dia nak buat projek dekat Shah Alam. So dia pergi uh, majlis perbandaran Shah Alam. So di situ dia boleh act as employee's agent. On behalf of, of my client, he wishes to build, okay, uh, 10 stories of hotel. So basically I'm here to submit all the plans on behalf of my client to be approved by the local authority. Ha. In that case yang tak memerlukan professionalism ataupun professional skill, dia act as employer's agent. Okay. 
And then kalau yang melibatkan sebagai professional, yang melibatkan professionalism sebagai professional people, so dia kena act accordingly. So dual role function, okay, satu act uh, on his employer's instruction in uh, not a professional related uh, matters and then and the second one is in matters requiring professional skills, he must form an act on his own. So must work independently, must decide independently. Okay, tak boleh relying and tak boleh interfere by the employer's decision. Okay, itu Sutcliffe and Takra. And then the second thing is Merton versus Leach, 1985. Dual role was explained as an agent must be performed with reasonable diligence and reasonable care and skill. Kalau you're talking about, okay, agent, so must be performed with reasonable diligence and reasonable care and skill. So any negligence will make the employer liable for breach of contract. So as the certifier, employer must leave him free to exercise his decretion fairly without interference. So satu as an agent, so dia kena practice all reasonable diligence and reasonable care and skill. Okay, and then the second thing as certifier, employer must leave him free to exercise his discretion. Discretion itu Kalau I lah bagi marks, for example, okay, ada dalam exam ada uh, student A, student B. So dalam uh, student A tu dia jawab one page full tapi duk keep repeating the same point. Satu lagi tu dia jawab uh, three uh, quarter of the page, uh, bukannya sampai full page macam satu lagi. Tapi dia tak ada repetitive point and dia bagi semua solid point. So based on my discretion, because of um, yang satu ni dia jawab, dia adalah usaha untuk menjawab. So I give him marks accordingly untuk poin-poin yang dia dah bagi. And those yang I rasa I patut bagi marks kalau contohnya dia ada poin tapi poin dia tak sampai sepatutnya dua I bagi satu. Ha, itu adalah discretion I. Kenapa? Sebab dia tulis, dia at least dia ada effort untuk tulis. So based on my discretion. Okay, so sama juga macam certifier tadi ni. Okay, sebagai certifier yang tadi uh, certified anything, so dia mesti exercise dia punya discretion fairly sebab dia adalah professional dekat dalam bidang dia. Okay, without any interference. So dual role of employer's agent. Okay, employer's agent ada uh, kontrak sebagai kontrak administrator ataupun employer's agent satu. Satu lagi adalah sebagai um, okay, professional skill that is independent certifier that must uh, perform according to dia punya professional skills. Alright, tak boleh uh, ni lah. Tak boleh uh, ada uh, apa orang kata? Uh, diskriminasi on dia punya professional uh, to, uh, professionalism and skills. <coughs> and then it is yes. Yes. Uh, dia tahu sendiri ke atau dia ada stated dekat masa dia sign tu dia ada stated ke as, pro, uh, as uh, professional ke independent ke dia ke dia, dia, dia tahu sendiri? Ah, uh, Dia adalah yang uh, implied uh, obligation. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, so, client pun aware, uh, all the professionals pun aware because when we are working as professional people, kita ada standard uh, apa reasonable uh, skill and care kita. So, and kita ada level of professionalism yang kita perlu portray. So, ada certain things yang melibatkan we know, maksudnya kalau dalam uh, interim certificate, for example, client dia pergi tak dekat site? Dia tak pergi. So, dia tak tahu. So, in that, in that case, dia tak boleh interfere sebab bila dia leave kepada QS untuk buat interim evaluation and uh, uh, facilitate ataupun dibantu oleh uh, uh, arkitek. So, arkitek ini akan bagi uh, input kepada QS okay, as a professional. 
So dia tengok dekat side, okay dah 50%. So bila dia discuss dengan QS, QS pun kata yes, uh, the way I look at it, okay based on I dah tengok uh, progress, dah buat beam, dah buat upper slab. So basically this contractor has reached 50% of the progress. So basically in that case, kalau dua orang professional yang dah decided on 50%, so dia kena exercise as professional uh, skill dia, dia kena stay dekat dalam interim payment itu 50%. So client tadi tu tak boleh interfere. Kenapa? Adakah client orang yang professional dekat dalam buat interim payment dan juga dekat site? Tak. Betul? Okay. Dia bukan adalah orang yang pakar dalam bidang dia. So in that certification ataupun certifier yang mana-mana memerlukan certifier, certi certification so dia perlu leave it kepada orang yang pakar untuk membuatnya. Okay. So macam itu I cakap tadi. Ada certain things. Okay macam pergi ke uh, apa majlis pemanaran Syah Alam tadi tu. Dia kena ikut. Okay. Lepas ni kena pergi pemanaran, uh, pemanaran Syah Alam. You kena apply uh, approval. Uh, plan approval untuk I. Okay dia pergi. Dia ikut. Kenapa? Sebab itu tak melibatkan professionalism dia. Dia pergi untuk dapatkan uh, approval of plan. Tapi kalau melibatkan uh, certification untuk certified uh, betul work, work uh, done on site dah 50% itu melibatkan dia punya professionalism. So itu dia tak boleh uh, apa uh, discriminate lah. Dia tak boleh. Dia kena act independently. Sebab itu adalah melibatkan uh, contractors punya uh, future juga. Okay lagi soalan. Thank you Madam. Ah, uh, Alright. Okay. As agent, it is an implied warranty that the whole responsibility in the uh, hands of the agent does impliedly warrant a demanded level of uh, level duty and care in which a negligent act in the part of the agent may, may induce breach in the part of the uh, employer. So, kalau Uh, client tak satisfied with the agent, dia punya performance, dia punya decision okay ataupun dia tak buat uh, apa duty and care yang sepatut, pada level yang sepatutnya so basically boleh breach contract lah. So client boleh uh, sack ataupun uh, terminate uh, agent tadi dan lantik agent baru. Alright. So dah memang implied warranty, implied obligation responsibility in the hands of agent. So sepatutnya dia kena tahu yang dia patut uh, biarkan agent dia uh, exercise dia punya responsibility okay dan obligations accordingly lah. Okay sebab bila dia dah lantik sepatutnya based on trust and based on responsibility yang mengatakan orang itu capable untuk jadi uh, untuk act as agent kepada employer. Okay, sebab nama pun will act on behalf of the employer. So kalau dia tak benarkan untuk buat uh, level of duty and care yang sepatutnya dan they keep interfere, so basically uh, it's wrong lah. Dan maybe kalau dia biarkan juga tapi tak sampai, dia tengok dah semua benda macam dia yang kena decide, uh, dia tak macam dia yang everything semua serba tak kena Uh, so tak up to the level of duty and care uh, yang sepatutnya So dia boleh sack ataupun terminate uh, employer's agent dia tadi tu Eh tak ada masalah Okay and then uh, kita ada certifier Employer will leave appointed professional to perform his duty um, professionally Thus uh, authorizing them to exercise their duty with reasonable professional discretion No improper interference by the employer should happen. So tadi kalau sebagai agent, okay, kena act uh, according uh, to uh, level of duty and care that it should be demanded uh, duty and care. Kalau as certifier, must perform his duty professionally, okay, based on reasonable professional discretion. No interference should be made by the client. So dia tak boleh... Uh, Interfere lah in whatever yang uh, the professional tengah buat. Okay. Okay by name is superintending officer. Uh, kalau dalam projek-projek uh, PWD kita gunakan superintending officer. Okay kalau dalam projek-projek PEM kita namakan dia arkitek. 
ataupun ada certain kita panggil dia sebagai uh, employer's representative ataupun certain contract dekat overseas kita panggil dia employer's agent ataupun kalau dekat design build kita panggil dia project director. Okay, PD. So jangan be surprised lah kalau you tak jumpa SO, you jumpa PD, you tahulah. Okay, uh, dia adalah uh, design build punya contract. So not a party to the contract but must act purely reasonable in the interest of the employer as agent. So dia bukan party in the contract. Yang berkontrak adalah employer as well as contractor. Tapi dia act on behalf of the employer. So must act purely reasonable. Okay sebab dia uh, actually acting on behalf of the employer. Any act may cause liability to the employer, breach of contract as certifier and can still be liable as an independent party if acting outside of the authority given. So authority given sebagai um, apa ni employer's agent selain daripada itu dia perlulah act professionally. So authority uh, given uh, kalau you refer uh, contract PAM okay sekarang dah ada PAM berapa? 2000 berapa? PAM? 2018. Okay so boleh refer PAM 2018. Uh, apa authority given untuk uh, employer's agent. Alright and then okay, kita ada tiga minit lagi. Okay liabilities of employer's agent, delegations of authority and specialist, duties and extents of power of the superintending officers. Okay variation orders and contract, inspection and supervision of the works. Information and instruction to the contractor, okay, advice the employer and then monitoring of the work. So kalau kita tengok dekat sini, okay, dah ada semuanya, alright. Tapi I takkan habiskan, I takut uh, tak sempat hari ni. So kita akan stop dekat uh, 44 eh. So don't worry, nanti I akan sambung dekat 44 and then kita akan masuk topik barulah. So 44 to 47, lepas tu I akan terus masuk second topic lepas raya nanti. Any question so far? Nanti kalau tak, I takut drag sampai satu setengah pula. Huh. Any question so far? Any question? Semua dah hilang ke? I seorang je tinggal? No madam. Yes. Any question so far? No. Okay, uh, dah, uh, ter terlalu overwhelm ke banyak sangat information kan? Sebab hari ni kita macam uh, terus straight. Uh, I bagi you break 5 minit je tadi. Uh, any other questions before I let you go? No madam. Okay, uh, Akilah because you kata no, summarize uh, apa dual roles of uh, employees agent tadi tu? Yes, Akila. Satu. Um, it will be a responsibility as an independent party. Independent certifier. Uh, ah, yeah, certifier. Okay, where? Where? Kalau independent where? certifier, where? The the employer cannot. Cannot give the authority. Huh? Cannot interfere. Not interfere. In any decision made. As well as must let the let the huh? Independent certifier to exercise apa? Exercise there. Mana Akilah ni? Cepat dah, dah pukul satu dah. As, exercise their professional skills, betul? Okay, professional okay. skills. Okay, so dia uh, apa ni, inter, independent certifier where the employer cannot interfere in any decision made and the employer let them to exercise their professional uh, skills Okay and make any discretions regarding their decisions. Betul. Satu lagi. 
kalau act as employer's agent uh, in contract administrator as contract administrator so must up to up to clients demanded standard duty and care okay lah tak apalah okay bye assalamualaikum letih dah tunggu ha Okay, so kita endkan di sini eh. Uh, so nanti uh, tolong summarize dekat I. Okay, dual role. Okay, of uh, employer's agent. Uh, satu as uh, in contract administrator. And, and, and administration, sorry. The second one is as independent certifier. Okay, bye. Assalamualaikum. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Dandanlah dini tu ha. Okay bye.